welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be installing a solar system in my barn where I have no power, no lights, no nothing. So this is the fast and easy way for me to get power out here because I can't run power out here from my house. That just takes a little bit too much money and effort. So this is the fix that I'm going to do. In order to achieve this, I'm going to be installing a, the Harbor Freight Thunderbolt uh, 25 watt solar panel. This is a really cool uh, solar panel. I'm going to pair it up with a 12 volt 35 amp battery. In order to charge the battery, I will be using the 100 watt uh, solar charge regulator. And in order to make the lights work, I'm going to use the, what is this, the Syntec power inverter. And this does up to 800 watts peak. I'll never reach that, so I'm not really worried about it. So, I'm going to do this a little bit differently with this panel. As you can tell, it's supposed to sit vertical. I'm not going to be doing that. I need to save space on the ground. So I'm actually going to mount this horizontal on the side of my barn. In order for me to be able to do that, I'm going to make custom mounts for it. And it has to be uh, waterproof. So I really need to think of materials. It's not going to rust. Um, so I have stainless steel bolts and nuts uh, in order to bolt it to a brace. And I was thinking I could use uh, galvanized steel, uh, something like that, in order to make the mounts. But I had some uh, scrap piping laying around, so I'm actually going to use copper piping. And uh, I'm going to bolt it to the bottom, and that's at least not going to rust or anything like that. For the top, I need to create a quick angle for it to actually mount and stay um, really firmly attached to the building. So I'm actually going to... Uh, work out the copper and make uh, triangle angle brackets to where I can screw straight through to the side of the barn itself. Uh, and the lights that I'm using are, so I'm doing all of this to power four, uh, four foot linkable shop lights. I got this from Sam's Club. It's only 20 bucks. And uh, this is 5,000 lumens, so it puts out an incredible amount of light. Uh, this says that it's 50 watts which is fine. I think that the 35 um, amp hour battery will be able to power this, at least for the durations that I'm going to be in my barn. If it doesn't, then I'll link up a couple more batteries. So with that being said, stick around. I'm going to show you how I get it done and just install it. And then once we're all done, we'll circle back and we'll see how the lighting is. <laughs> Alright, so I got the wire inside. Uh, this has a really big head on it uh, for the connector, so I wasn't able to get it through the hole, so I actually had to cut the wire. And whenever you re splice these wires back together, it's really important that you put them uh, on, the, on the right wires. So here's a good little tip, and it may be hard to see, but one wire has ribs on it, and the other wire is smooth. And that's one way to identify the wires when you're putting them back together is that the smooth goes with the smooth and the ribbed goes with the ribbed. And that's pretty much all uh, types of wires like this, like lamp wires and things like that. Some have a stripe on them, but this is a pretty good rule of thumb. Just check out the uh, texture of the wire itself. 
So let's go ahead, get these stripped, get them spliced together, and uh, start assembling everything. All right, so this seems very simple. You have the battery that you hook up here. Uh, you have the solar panel, which you hook up to this one, and then you hook your load up to this one. So we know the solar panel goes here, so we'll go ahead and hook that up. Okay. Now we'll hook the battery up to this side. Now I'm not going to hook the load up. Uh, Okay everybody, so here is the finished product. So you can see I have the uh, charge regulator here. This runs to the batteries right here. That clips onto here. Uh, this is for small light bulbs, a very uh, low type of load. You can put that there. I ended up crimping on these just to cap it off so there's no voltage hanging out. Uh, down here, this is the DC to AC converter and it's connected here as well and you know I just want to point out something real quick I didn't use the alligator clamps that they included because I'm using this for lighting and I'm not going to use it that often but um, I don't like alligator clips all the time so I ended up putting uh, crimp hooks on here or crimp eyes on here so they're just uh, circles and uh, you can sandwich them onto the terminals of the block itself I feel like that's a better connection and uh, then it's crimped on, you know, and those are nice solid connections in there. Um, so, and that, this provides the power to this cord right here. And this is just an extension cord that I've ran out to my garage. I ended up uh, mounting a switch box on the wall and I just ran cord, extension cords over to the lights themselves. So, let's go ahead and check the voltage. This is under load as we speak. First, we'll check DC voltage using the good old Fluke 116 here. And right now it's 12.08 volts. Let's switch it to AC, which is alternating current. And we will test this side. And mind you, this is under load. And it's putting out 114 volts right here. So seems to be working just good here. Let's go take a look on the actual inside of the barn garage. Alright everybody, so here's the light in the garage. I think it's awesome. I have plenty of light to do what I need in here at any given time. All I need to do is really hit the inverter and then as throughout the day I can hit the light switch in here as well. Um, so I hope that you all enjoyed this video. I hope that it helped you in some way. If it did, please remember to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.